Hey guys, uh, welcome to another video um, of Phoenix and Glitchy Talk Shit. Um, this is actually part two of our episode two of our Phoenix and Glitchy's Gaming Corner series. Yes. And this is also kind of a confessional video too, I gotta admit. Um, so today's topic is Joker from the Mass Effect series. So Joker kind of gets. A little bit of the shaft from a lot of fans because I don't see why he's amazing. Well, he's a relatively minor character. A lot of people don't actually take time to kind of get to know him, you know, uh, do any of his dialogue because a lot of people are more concerned with the romance options and their other party members and yeah. the people that you know that they actually interact with when they're outside of Normandy. Um, but there's actually there's at least a couple of tidbits of information that I think you guys should actually know that kind of relate to real world things and it's one of the reasons why I love Bioware so much. Mm -hmm. um, so before I go into that I'm just going to kind of give you guys a little bit of an overview about something important. Um, in case you guys didn't already know, I'm disabled. I have what is known as osteogenesis imperfecta. I will spell it in an annotation so you guys know how to, you know, spell uh, it in case you want to look it up. Yep. Um, and it's basically, in layman's terms, brittle bone disease. Mm -hmm. Now, fans of Mass Effect that did take the time to get to know Joker will probably think, hmm, is, is that anything similar to what Joker has? In Mass Effect, Joker has what is known in the game as Vrolix Syndrome. I'll spell yes. that too. I was um, I wasn't sure if you were gonna actually like remember what it was called. <laughs> oh, I, I remember because it's really fucking like awesome. Um, yeah. now, now, something. The reason why this is important is because my bone disorder is what a lot of places consider an orphan disease. It's a very rare genetic disorder. Um, it's a terrible thing to call it. It's something related to um, the prevalence in the actual society as a whole. Um, I'm not sure if it's actually considered that anymore, but it was for quite a long time. Um, and basically, I think at last count, it's either 25,000 or 250,000 people in the U.S. have. I think it's 25,000. God um, damn. Have 25,000 people in the U.S. I think it's a safe estimate. Um, don't get me to the lion because I don't quite remember the number right off the top of my head. I'll put the real number in the video itself. Right. Um, like, like we've said before, guys, we don't research these. You know, we don't. We do. We're going off what we know, what we've experienced, and we try not to let our things be tainted by too much media outletting and too much, you know, research from other people's vantage points. Right. Um, but about 25,000 people in the U.S. alone Jesus. have at least, or not at least, have a type or another of osteogenesis imperfecta. Um, and so, and a lot of people, when I mentioned that I have it, a lot of people have no idea what it is. Which brought me, which is why it's so amazing that Bioware created a character with a disability so similar to my own. Mm -hmm. In fact, aside from the name... It's and, exactly the same thing. Yeah, it's exactly the same thing. The only difference is he would have what is called type 1 as opposed to type 3, which I have, which is a more severe type. Mm. Um, because Joker, he can walk. Yeah, Joker can walk. He is more prone to fracture, but he can walk. Um... Now, like I said, this was just an astounding thing for me because I had never seen anything else in, in media. Yeah, there's not a lot of video games in the world that, you know, have even side characters. Characters that are in the um, eye of the, you know, on the good side or whatever, don't often have 
any disabilities kind of, disability. of any kind. Yeah. I mean, you'll see, you know, a deaf person or a blind person, you know, you'll see yeah. that kind of stuff. But that's more outwardly, like, obvious. You know, mm -hmm. a, a blind person, you'll see that all the time. Daredevil is a blind superhero. You know, you have Hawkeye, who is deaf. Um, Wait! In the Hawkeye? comics, in the comics, Hawkeye is deaf. Um, I was not aware of that. I don't remember why. I don't remember if it's due to an accident or if he just it's probably went deaf work over. related. Probably, I don't quite remember. Um, I haven't caught up with all the comic stuff yet, but right. you know, so to see something so well crafted, you know, narrative games like you know Bioware's games are incredibly well crafted and attention to detail the depth um, within each game is quite fantastic honestly and you see um and it's not just joker that mentions it mm -hmm. dr Ch dr chakwas i think is how you say her name yeah chakwa chakwas chakwa yeah um she actually is joker's caretaker on the normandy she assists to all of his medical needs um, well, she assists to everyone's medical needs, but specifically well, she assists his. Right. She is his doctor, for the most part. She is familiar with his disorder. Um, and to see that, to see that not only have they put this character in there, but they've also gone in such a thorough fashion mm -hmm. as to... And they don't Consider make him every... a joke. No, they don't. Contrary to his name, Joker, um, <laughs> he's not. He's not a punchline. Yeah. He he, he is. He saves Shepard and his crew multiple times. Yeah, he does. And not just with the, the piloting. There's a, literally a set of scenes and playing where you actually have to take over as Joker. You become Joker, and you have to go through and. Um, you know, save everybody's ass. And, and I and really cool like the way they went about it. Yeah, and I love the way they went about it because they didn't over overplay his personal issues. They made them prevalent. They made them understandable for people. And um, they made him they a fucking adult about it. Yeah, and, and he and I see things relatively eye to eye it is what it is we are who we are we are the way we are and it is what it is yeah and, and you just have to fucking fight through right and unlike some people that i've seen you know he embraces it and does what he can in spite of it mm -hmm. and i feel the same way i've seen disabled people with any kind of disability who use it as a crutch or they drown themselves in their own misery because they think that they're worthless because of it but it's a part of you it's not all of you in some cases though some people can't help it like me with my disorders i can't really help when i spiral into despair i try not to because i fucking hate it and it's obnoxious and stupid but sometimes well, but, you just but can't i'm help it. i'm I'm not even talking about, like, you know, the occasional bad day mm -hmm. where you're, you know, spiraling into despair. I'm talking about people who have never done anything with their life. Right, yeah. And never will. I knew a girl who had the same disorder that I have, that her parents taught her that because she was disabled, she didn't have to follow the rules everybody had to follow, and they catered to her, and well, all these that's things. stupid. And she has not done anything with her life. And I'm sorry, but that's ridiculous. That's because fucking ridiculous. That is fucking ridiculous. I am a disabled person, but I have just as much brain power, if not more, than some people. You know, and I can... There are things I cannot do for myself. And there are a lot of frustrations in my life related to those things. But everything that I can possibly do for myself, I do for myself. Because I can. So, to see that in media, to see a character that has these difficulties, 
that most people had no clue what the fuck it was until Mass Effect came along. I did know what it was. You did? Yeah. I've I've experienced, you know, people. I I think I went to. A, I'm fairly sure that there was a, a a boy I went to school with who had such a disorder. It was early on, and you know, but I've also seen brittle bone disease in other media. And there was a movie called Unbreakable. And... Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, and see, it's so rare to see it. I didn't really me. care for it because of the fact that they just, you know, made it the guy who had the disease, like, a villain, just to make him a villain, it seemed like. I, I, I don't know, it's been a while since I've seen the movie, so. Yeah, and I think, I think it is. It's been a while since I've seen the movie, but to me, when Mass Effect came out, I was, I was a teenager at this point, mm -hmm. and it was so rare for me to see, you know, anything related to my disorder i was used to seeing people that when you mentioned it they were like what is that yeah. you know so to see it it just kind of to see it and it see was, it in such a acceptable fashion it was so just it was a boost of confidence for me for one thing because it was like well this is what i've been trying to get across to people you know if joker can kick ass and, you know, be a part of the crew, then why can't I be a functioning, you know, right, yeah. member of society? And, and so the reason for doing this video is the fact that Joker is an underrated character. I agree. Sorely underrated. And, you know, and he's an actually fantastic person. He's funny, he's witty, and he's confident. Yeah. And frankly, I would have loved to have him be a romance option in any of the games. For male or female, I'd have made a female character if I'd have had to, to romance him. Because <laughs> that would have been a huge step forward. I think so too. Because there's this stigma that I've noticed around disabled people that they automatically think we're unapproachable or they automatically think that we're that you're your wheelchair or your crutches or whatever right, you know or that, and that I'm we're not my disability right and you know that we're not you know something to be desired and you know we have wants and needs and desires just like everybody else mm -hmm. you know we have dreams we have you know and it's just, it, it was nice to see that somebody artfully created a character that was everything that I had been trying to get people to understand for yeah. so many years. And I don't talk about my disorder much, especially not on videos. And I should probably make a video about it eventually. Um, so that people can kind of understand some of the difficulties and frustrations. But... To, to, to that's why Joker is so important is because he's a well-made character on his own. He really is, honestly. He's fantastic. And then you, and then you add that in, and it's it's a rare example of a disabled character that actually matters. Yeah, more that, than just than just a plot somebody's. Point. Yeah, exactly. Than just a plot point or somebody's joke or or what have you. You know, um, I, I I think that Joker is definitely one of the more memorable characters from Mass Effect. Definitely. And I'm just going to go out and say that I think Mass Effect Andromeda is going to be worse off for him not being in it, if he's not in it. Mm. Which I don't think he will, because I'm sure it's going to be a whole other cast of characters. I've been hearing and rumors fine. that it's supposed to be like grandkids or or whatever of the uh, original crews. And, and you know that's that's perfectly fine, even if there's no reference. You know, even if it's just passing reference to him. I um, wanted to romance you know, uh, Joker. Honestly, I think he would be a fantastic romance option. And, and you know. <sighs> 
Casting obviously has to change. Characters change in books and movies and games mm-hmm. all the time. But to see one so well done, it's going to be hard to play Mass Effect Andromeda and not think, man, I wish Joker was, you know, piloting the ship again, yeah. you know, kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Things like, damn, I miss that fucker. And who knows, maybe there'll be, like, Edie on the fucking ship. That's a distinct possibility. Because she's an android, so maybe it'll be, like, she gets a phone call from whatever planet <laughs> phone they're call. on. And Joker's like, hey, babe, how are you doing on the ship? Like, you know, because, spoiler, would be spoiler, amazing. they can be, they do, they do romance in, uh, in Mass Effect 3, spoiler. Which there. I honestly think that's something amazing as well. I was kind of curious about that because I'm like, she's a robot. I bet she's awfully heavy. Did she break it? <laughs> like, Alex! <laughs> Something tells uh, you know, me that... that no, she didn't break him. They probably had well, I'm different... sure. I just had a mental image of Joker and his sex sling. I'm sure she's hyper aware of like the force well, that yeah. she puts behind things so it's probably one of those things where she's very aware and i'm sure dr chalk was gave her all the like medical data and shit and from what i remember um wasn't wasn't uh oh jesus somebody or something was working on a cure in the last game for his disease yeah um i think they were but and the thing is that that would be a distinct possibility, especially in the futuristic setting that it's in. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas there's very little awareness of it in our modern day, um, and we don't really know what causes it. Genetically speaking, mm-hmm. um, in my family, it started as a genetic mutation on my grandparents' part. Which led to my mother being born with it, and then she passed it on to me because of hereditary genes. So we're not even sure where the hell it came from. We're pretty sure it was just a spontaneous genetic fluke. Um, but they've they were originally doing research in it, and they're still doing research. But when they outlawed stem cell research um, back in 08 or whenever it was Bush was in office well, of um, course it was Bush whenever he did the whole whenever he did the whole uh, no stem cell thing um, that kind of eliminated a lot of the outlets for researching it um, the UK is actually doing research for it and actually it's a lot more common like place it's a lot more common to see people with it over there because they have a lot more doctors that are aware of it over there. Um, but, you know, I wouldn't be surprised. It'd be kind of cool to have Joker as a, like, squad member in Andromeda and, like, his disorder has been cured and now he's, like, fucking a biotic or fully... Yeah, definitely. You know, although that give would be him really the L3 cool. or 5 implants, not the fucking L2s. Are those the ones that gave uh, Kaiden the headaches? Yeah, the L2s. Kaiden had the L2s. Yeah. I'm um, just gonna say it right now, I didn't like Kaiden. I think I've said it before in a video or two, maybe, but I didn't like him. He just. He grew on me he when I romanced him. He did not grow him. on me. I didn't The problem was. Him, so. The romance system in the Mass Effect games was so fucking like convoluted to get Gaiden to be romanceable that it was just obnoxious. It, mm, I refuse, refuse, refuse. Um, but also, yeah, I, like I mean. state that, side note, I'm lost in Inquisition. Uh, oh god. Um, what's our time at, by the way? Oh shit, I don't know. Uh, oh, just 1923. We're almost at 20 minute mark. Okay. So we're good. Um, well, I've pretty much rambled on about Joker for 20 minutes here, and so, if, um... If, if anybody's wondering, the reason I'm really not talking myself is because this isn't something that I'm fully familiar with, and I don't suffer from it or anything like that, so, because it is something that Alex 
lives with day to day, or Phoenix, sorry, lives with day to day, he knows more about it than me, obviously. And I'm pretty sure we'll do pretty soon a full on kind of um, instructional <laughs> explanation video, I guess. So you guys can kind of understand, because there's not very many people that even know like about it. Mm -hmm. It's not something that people are common, commonly faced with, and um, it's a little bit different from what most people are used to. Um, so I'll probably start working on like trying to pull some thoughts together and get you guys like an actual mm -hmm. explanation. So, um, but I will put the name of the the name and some resources and stuff in the description and the annotations that way if you guys wanted to do some research yourselves um mm -hmm. you can i'm not like expecting you guys to awareness would be fantastic um because you know the more awareness the closer people would be to finding you know cures and stuff like that but i'm not gonna expect that of you guys because it is what it is um, but thank you guys for listening to me ramble on about this. It's a very important topic to me. I love Joker to death. I do. And He's amazing. I will, I'll have some more information for you guys in the coming videos. We'll probably do some, uh, other stuff first. This is episode two of our gaming corner, even though it's sort of a confessional thing too. But anyway, um, <laughs> thank you guys for watching. Let us know what you want to see. If you'd just rather not hear me talk about it, let me know. I'm probably going to anyway, but, you know. Yeah, because it's our turn, um, so. Yeah. Yeah. But, but subscribe, please. Thank you for watching. And we will let us see know what you, you want to see. We will see you in the next video. Yeah. Bye. Bye.